Our sense of touch is essential for almost everything we do and understanding how this works can help us better design systems that rely on it, from haptic interfaces to physical human-robot interaction. Covering it all is Professor Catherine Kuchenbecker, who looks at haptic intelligence. Thanks very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. We really appreciate that, so thank you. My pleasure. Why is touch important when it comes to work? Well, Touch is, I think, the most underappreciated of our senses. So you know you can see, you can hear, you can smell, taste, and touch. Unlike the other senses, touch is distributed through your whole body, and it's driven by many different kinds of receptors. You can feel pressure, vibration, pain, stretch, inside yourself, outside yourself, the pose of your body. We really as humans almost just take it for granted. Right. But almost all robots that we build today have a very primitive sense of touch. They typically know where their body is in space, but they know almost nothing about whether that body is contacting the world. And thus, when they try to interact with things, say like pick up a cup, but for a robot to do that well, and not say crush your wine glass or drop things all the time, it really needs a sense of touch. But we're still in the very early days in terms of what makes good touch sensors in different situations for different parts of a robot's body, and how can we process that information to enable a robot to do things autonomously with objects and also around people. So how important is haptics when it comes to remote interaction? Yeah, actually, telerobotics, when you control a robot from a distance, was the foundation of the entire field of robotics. Right. It was developed uh, for humans to be able to remotely manipulate hazardous things like nuclear material. The first telerobotics, uh, telerobotic systems were actual manipulators, like remote control physically linked. So they had natural haptics. You were just driving like almost like a puppet, a physical puppet around. And then when they split that and put a computer and some electronics and sensors and actuators between them, there was no sense of touch. So my team has worked a lot on different ways to bring back, to add in a sense of touch in telerobotic systems. Most of our work has been uh, on robotic surgery and we have designed a system that where we can add components to any, almost any surgical robot, say like a Da Vinci robot right. by Intuitive Surgical. A little sensor near the tools, the one on each tool, we use an accelerometer that can measure the vibrations of contact when the instruments hit each other or hit things or cut or even when they're not viewable by the surgeon. And then on near the surgeon's hand, on the joysticks, we put a little vibration motor, and this repeats the vibrations that say the left and right tools are feeling, say inside the patient's body or where, where they're trying to disarm a bomb or something, and let the surgeon feel that. So now when the surgeon hits something, they can feel the contact, they know how rough they're being, right. and we found this has uh, an immense improvement of their ability to learn how to do tasks remotely and do them safely. What are you working on to make that uh, interaction between humans and robots more uh, effective? We work on lots of different ways to add touch into telerobotic systems. Along the way, we got inspired in several other directions. One uh, was to give robots a sense of touch when they're manipulating through sensing and uh, sensing perception. And another is to have actually human-robot interaction, not a human controlling a robot to right. do a task, but interacting with a person like an agent like you and I right. are right now. Right. And the kind of human-robot interaction that we're really fascinated with is physical human-robot interaction, where we just don't talk, but we might say, like, shake hands, so right. we can do this, right. or play a different hand clapping game. Yeah, so yeah. we've built a few different robotic systems that interact with humans safely and in a physical way. Touch is super important also for uh, interhuman uh, connection and uh, personal interaction. And so as more robots come into our homes and maybe try to help us do household tasks or take care of an older adult or uh, do uh, maybe work in a hospital, right. they're going to bump into people sure. and they're not only going to need to be able to do that brushing past, past someone in a hallway in a safe way, but also in a polite or maybe even fun way. So wouldn't it be cool if your robot could give you a high five when it, after it delivers you your medicine in the hospital or after it helps cleaning up the kitchen? And you've designed a robot that can hug. Oh, yes, actually, also, we, we call it HuggyBot. HuggyBot 1.0, uh, I built when I was a professor at Penn in Philadelphia, and we showed that ro people prefer hugging yeah. soft, warm robots, and also, very funnily, robots that will let you go when you're ready to go. <laughs> we program the robot to hold on too long, and people really don't like that. So, obviously, it needs touch sensing, so it can tell when you're ready to be released. And we're also now building HuggyBot 2.0 in Europe at, at ETH uh, and at, in my lab at MPI. And then we're also working on a whole series of robots for exercise where right. they play physical interaction games, stretching, and we have great results that are under review right 
right now in a journal uh, that people, both younger and older people, really enjoyed interacting with the robot in this fun, social, physical way. The robot smiles and moves its head and plays music and challenges you to reach and stretch and move fast. So quite a lot of fun. You should visit my lab. Perfect. Thank you ever so much indeed. That, that was great. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.